The Sylvia Hoffman Collection is one of the largest and most complete bodies of Tommy Parzinger works, one of the most compelling collections to ever come to auction. The significance of the collection is that it is both iconic and highly personal. In the 1930s, Sylvia Hoffman, with a background in design, was in the same sphere of influence as Tommy Parzinger and Donald Cameron's. They are the integral members. I don't know if we can go so far as to say that they're partners, but they are the integral members of Parzinger Originals. Her relationship with Parzinger was roughly 40 years. In the early years of their relationship, Parzinger agreed to design Hoffman's two homes, and he designed the layout of the homes, and then appointed Parzinger pieces to the homes. And interestingly, some of the pieces were photographed in situ in the Hoffman homes. So this is part of what makes them so personal. Tommy Parzinger, German-born, 1903, couldn't help but be influenced by the popular European design movements of the 1920s and 30s. Sort of in the Bauhaus tradition, you had an interdisciplinary education, and so you would be taught many things. His first um, real big client in the 1930s is René Rosenthal, and one thing leads to another, and his designs are picked up by many companies back then. In short order, he starts working on a commission basis. Basically, we see Parzinger in New York in his own office from the late 30s through the late 70s. My view of his success is that he's interpreting classical themes, he's producing heirloom quality pieces, no matter the scale of the pieces or the functionality of the pieces. They're simple and luxurious simultaneously. So for example, the chandelier, uh, which is nickeled brass, configured very simply in a ring or a crown-like motif, stylized chains, and then at the bottom, a frosted glass panel. The scale of the piece is very elegant, simple, modern, of heirloom quality. The two other pieces that I think really do this very well is the racetrack coffee table, made of matte chromed steel, where the members come together. Uh, there are little adornments of stamped brass, and then at the very bottom, a plane of lacquered wood. It's simple, it's light, it's compact, and all the materials are luxurious. Another piece that has these traits is the lacquered studded cabinet. So configured of four doors, it's quite formal, uh, yet it's compact. It has the elegance of an off-white lacquered finish and the handsome touches of enameled iron mounts that include stylized poles and smaller scale studs. And then at the very bottom is an elegant wrought iron base. And to think that this piece was made in the late 40s or early 50s when most of America was looking at reinforced plastic fiberglass seating like the Eameses or polyurethane furniture being produced by George Nelson like the marshmallow sofa. He's going in one direction and they're going in another. And um, quite obviously, he's got a whole nother vision of what modernism can be.